Uh, Insider.com had this next story that got my attention uh, earlier this week because I, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I don't like the approach to this. Maybe I am saying it's wrong. Uh, so you have a pair of YouTubers who are admitting to destroying over 100 copies of a VHS tape. In doing so, leaving only one final copy of this rare movie. And in doing so, when you only have one copy left, it is worth a lot more. And so it sold for tens of thousands of dollars in an eBay auction because it was the final copy. The only reason it was the final copy is because they destroyed the others. Yeah, they wrecked 99 other ones to get there. So uh, it, it, I think it bears talking a little bit about the movie itself because there's a reason why. And we also have the ability to say, okay, there were about 100 known copies on VHS of this movie out there. Mm -hmm. There could be hundreds more that are just, you know, in the back of somebody's collection because they bought it in 1986 and haven't thought about it since then. But in terms of known circulated copies of this movie called Nuki, um, they, there were only about 100. So they destroyed every copy they could get their hands on to drive the price up. And it worked. As Jamie said, it sold their quote-unquote final copy, which may or may not really be, uh, sold on eBay for $80,600. That's a uh -huh. lot of money for a VHS tape, especially for a movie that I don't even remember. I'm sure most people don't. What happened after E.T., which would have been, what, 1981, um, mm -hmm. was that there was a slew of knockoffs. There were movies like Mac and Me, and, I mean, just everybody said saw the, the incredible worldwide success of E.T. and said, let's make a stupid knockoff of that. It was like the, the shark movies from 1977 to 1979. There were hundreds of them. This was one of those, this movie Nuki. Um, and nobody saw it in the theater, you know, a couple dozen people. And it, it may have even not, uh, a lot of those movies never saw a theatrical run. They went straight to VHS. Didn't even have any success there. So now we're to the point where nobody's paying any attention to it at all until this happens. And I have a couple of really obscure VHS tapes. I don't know that they're worth anything, but uh, but I have a, a couple of them back in the collection that are movies that you've probably never heard of, like Nice Girls Don't Explode. That's it's one of my favorites. Um, John? Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> um. I, look, I'm going to leave my... I I, I'm not going to ask what genre of movie that is. <laughs> it's a comedy. Um, uh -huh, I'm sure it is. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, th those do exist, but until there becomes some publicity around them. I mean, if these guys had done everything they did quietly with destroying all other 99 copies of Nuki that they could get their hands on, uh -huh. it wouldn't have mattered. They still could have put that copy up on eBay. It would have sold for 25 or 30 bucks. But because they made a story out of it, and it got publicity, that's when the thing becomes an object that everybody's going to want the last one of. All right, I have questions about this um, because it, this is Red Letter Media and a couple of you have texted saying you had heard about this and you already know about this channel because they review obscure movies like this. Um, I, I asked kind of, so a thing is worth whatever someone will pay for it. Of course. I mean, that that's what it comes down to, right? But doesn't does an item like this, despite it being rare, have a lot less value based on how it became rare. You know what I mean? I don't know what would make this movie have more value, but given that it wasn't, it was one of a hundred yeah. and then it was one of one and it wasn't because it's so rare that other copies have been destroyed over time or whatever it was, it became rare on purpose. Yeah. To me, then it has less value. Well, uh, yeah, artificially, right. It, uh, but but still, it is one of very few. Or, I mean, it may in fact be the only one. Thing is, though, as, as my guitar guy, Dave Hinson, is fond of saying, rarity doesn't necessarily make something worth anything. Leprosy is rare, and nobody wants that. So sure, yes. it, just because it's, I mean, there, I'm sure there are other videotapes out there that are one of maybe a dozen or one of a couple dozen that are in existence still after all this time. But that really doesn't make any difference unless... They're, they become something of a cause celeb, like this one did. I mean, these these guys did two things very well. They created artificial scarcity, mm -hmm. and they created artificial publicity. 
So mm-hmm. good for them. They won. And it's on the buyer then. Yes. It, it jokes on you, I guess. I mean, either to not, and this is my other question about this is that, and John, you do a lot of this and I, I really don't, but if you're in the market to buy a thing, you know, used or whatever, what questions do you ask about it ahead of time? And if rarity or scarcity is important to you, how do you prove it? If you ask, you know, they say, oh my gosh, it's only one of five copies in the world. Yeah. Do you ask and how do they prove it? Yeah. And, and that goes to, you ever watch Antiques Roadshow? Yeah. They yeah. do the same thing. Um, it, it, it comes down to asking other collectors. You ask around and you say, okay, has anybody seen this? Does anybody know of any other copies of this that are out there? And if the answer you consistently get from them is no, then again, it doesn't discount the uh, the idea that somewhere in Kansas City, there's a woman who bought a copy of that in, in the 1980s and hasn't thought about it since then and, and is sitting on what now is effectively a gold mine. She mm-hmm. just doesn't know it. Um, but, but yeah, when you're trying to figure out that kind of scarcity, that's what you do is you look at the market and see how many of them are out there for sale. That's what it really tells you. Yeah. And, you know, and then it also is just going to come down to sometimes people just really badly want the thing. Yeah. And it's worth it to them because they really want it. And do you, I mean, <laughs> I, I wonder if the person who spent $80,000 plus a little bit on this VHS tape even has a VHS player to, you know, if they wanted to take it out of the packaging and watch Nuki, which for why on earth would you want to do that and put yourself through that? Most of those movies were so bad. Um, Meatballs 2, anyone? So, uh, yeah, uh, it it probably isn't. It's something that, again, is going to sit on somebody's shelf. It's going to be, you know, a a Chewbacca statue, you know, that's worth a whole lot of money because there's only a couple of them. 913-586-7798. 913-586-7798. How do you feel about this one? Uh, Jessica has been hanging on the line in Prairie Village for us. Actually, she hasn't. Oh, no, sorry. We must have lost Jessica. Jessica, we if you can call back in, it. by all means. Sorry, we had to tell people what the story was about. <laughs> it took us some time. Uh, feel free to get back in here. Um, does Should the buyer of this movie at $80,000 feel cheated or duped based on how it became the only one? Yeah. Um, Should they be asking for some of their money back? Yeah, and you, again, you look at that against other movies that may be the only one of and just no one cares because until someone goes out there looking for it, mm-hmm. it's it's the same thing we were talking about, that sentimentality that we were going over last hour about things you don't want to throw away. Mm-hmm. Until somebody decides, ooh, my com- my collection of obscure 80s E.T. ripoffs is incomplete because I don't have a copy of Nuki. Right. <laughs> you know, I've got to go out and get one. Then it's still not worth anything to anybody. So, I mean, I'm sure to the person who bought it, it is worth it to them because now they've got the bragging rights that go along with that. That's really all we're talking about. Yeah. If you want to get in here, 913-586-7798. We'll take a break. Be back. Just a few minutes on KMBZ. This is Midday with Jamie and Grayson on 98.1 KMBZ. All right. Good friend of mine texted and said, Nuki is the worst movie he's ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible okay. is what I'm getting. There is so much more to this story. Uh, first of all, a giant thank you. To the text line, first of all, for that ding. And second of all, for um, pointing out a couple of things. First of all, uh, somebody sent us a link to the video where these guys destroy all the copies of Nuki. Okay. Um, and, I mean, it's it's very funny. They go through all the different ways. Uh, they end up putting a bunch of them through a wood chipper. Uh, you know, one of them they drop in a vas- uh, vat of acetone. They just go nuts with how if they shot a couple of them with how they're dispatching these copies of Nuki that they don't want. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. They even acknowledge in the video when they talk about auctioning off their quote-unquote final copy, they say, now we're going to auction off this maybe rare copy of Nuki. I mean, even they acknowledged that it's it's not, they can't guarantee that it's the only copy out there. So that ticked off in my head what we should have done at the very beginning of this, which is a little trip to eBay. And oh. uh, decided to check out. Now, this guy, again, spent $80,600 on their copy. Now, it's going to have some value to it because it's the actual one that they used in their video. Okay, so right. fans of them are going to find a reason to do this. 
But in looking around on eBay, I decided, okay, well, wh- why don't we see if there are any others? You know what? There's a lot of them. <laughs> if you want a VHS copy of Nuki, you can get one. And instead of $80,600, what do you suppose the average price of a Nuki VHS on eBay is right now? Does it go less than a dollar? Is that possible? No, anyway? no, no. It's more than that. It, it, okay. it is more than that. And okay. I'm sure that some of that is because of its newfound fame. Hundred bucks. Right around. Uh, the, the, you can get one as cheap. Now, these are not factory sealed, which is also going to make a difference. That makes a difference okay. to the price of anything. Sure. Uh, I'm trying to see if any of them, in fact, do say yes. One of them does say Nuki VHS sealed, rare, uh, hard to find. <laughs> Bathe yourself in the essence of Nuki. <laughs> oh, dear Lord. I don't like that phrase at all. $57 is where that one's up to right now. Uh, two days and five hours left, so it will surely go up from there, but we don't know how high. There's one uh, that's selling that you can just buy outright. That's a buy it now for 100 bucks or best offer plus $14 shipping. That's coming okay. from Canada, so go figure the Canadians would have one. 39 bids on another copy that's up to $51, and a pre-owned that has two bids now with an entire week left to go in the auction for $66. Okay, so let's come back to for a second where they said, we have the last 100 copies. Uh-huh. So they didn't actually no. have the last 100. No, and, they, and, and again, they did acknowledge in the video, these were the ones that they could find. Right. Yeah. So that was the that was the disclaimer there. So what's happening now, of course, is that everybody who saw that video and knows about this story is going back through their own VHS collections. And if they can find one, they know now is the time to sell it because you're right. If it you know what? As a matter of fact, let me look up. Nice girls don't explode on VHS. Uh, 15, 15, 17, 18, 9. Six bucks. Uh, yeah, you can get a copy of that for fairly cheap because, again, it doesn't have a story surrounding it right now. Right. But these guys are striking while the iron is hot, which is smart because they'll probably get a hundred bucks for a videotape that if they wait another couple of months after this story dies down, they won't be able to sell for 10 bucks. Okay. What's the lesson in this? For those, for, for people at home who have what they think may be rare video, we'll just stick with that. Uh-huh. You know, rare, rare. Rare copies of movies. What's the lesson here? Rare anything. Any collectible like that. Ask experts. Not an expert. Ask experts. Uh, Almost anything like that. Any collectible, whether it's toys, VHS tapes, CDs, records, whatever, will have shows that, that travel. Um, they'll also probably have dealers, especially when it comes to things like vinyl records. Here in town, we've got a whole bunch of uh, record dealers of used vinyl. Ask them. Say, look, I've got this. What do you think it's worth? There are books for a lot of that stuff as well that publish every, you know, the, like the football card price guides, the Beckett guides and things like that that publish every month or two. Um, mm-hmm. But but don't go on one person's word because that one person may be telling you, hey, it's only worth 15 bucks so that you'll sell it to him for 15 bucks and he'll turn around and sell it to somebody for a couple of thousand. Yeah, I always think um, <laughs> the suspicious part of me always thinks, what motivation does that person have to lie to me about yep. it? Or what what investment does that person have in the answer they give me? Right. Or in the game that we're playing here. Which is why, I mean, my my own personal rule, and not everybody has this, but my own personal ethic as far as that's concerned, is if I see somebody selling something that I want for what I know is way under market value, my only rule about that is I will let them set the price. And if I know it's way under market value, I won't try and talk them down. I, you know, I won't try to say, oh, yeah, you got it for 60 bucks. I'll give you 50 for it. If right. I know that 60 is half of what it's worth, I'll give him 60 bucks for it because he set the price. Yeah. Hmm. So interesting. Uh, all right. Moving on here while we have a few minutes to the story out of Dallas. I had never heard this term before. Jugging. Yeah. 